Chapter 7 Tattvas and the Jiva as the Object and Subject of Knowledge Chakra I prostrate myself before thee, O Goddess Padma. I have heard the list of the tattvas, cosmic principles, from thy lotus mouth. Now deign to explain them to me. Shri, O Chakra, I shall now describe the gradual development of the padati, courses, of the tattvas, cosmic principles. This tattva padati is said to be pure, impure, or mixed. Bhagavan, God, is known to be the eternal supreme self, absolutely unlimited by form, place, or time, pure like the cloudless sky, tranquil like a waveless sea, svatcha, pure, and svachanda, absolute consciousness, the great ocean, as it were, of ever-existent bliss. Narayani is his supreme I-hood, his eternal Godhood. She is absolute, subtle, undifferentiated, and without taint. When, as it were, in the great ocean of the six divine attributes, jnana, knowledge, shakti, power, bala, irresistibility, aishwarya, sovereignty, virya, valor, and tejas, indefatigability, simultaneously enter unmesha, the active state, that primary state consists of both the essence of existence and the state of existence, and is depicted in two ways. The essence of existence is Vasudeva, and his state of existence is Vasudevata, Vasudevahood, which is called Shanti and is identified with me, the eternal goddess. I have already explained the vyuhas, such as Sankashan, etc., along with their I-hood, in Chapter 6. These three vyuhas, together with Vasudev, the aggregate of all four vyuhas, these four indicated by the term Bhagavat, are, O Sureshwar, the most sublime reality unrelated to other principles. The sky is Parama Vyoma, the great firmament. It is called Parama Akasha, the great space, where God Vishnu, the eternal supreme self, divided himself in two and sports with me, Brahma. That space, where all six divine attributes become active, is called the supreme void. Purusha, Samasti Purusha, otherwise known as Hiranyagarbha, is inherent in Bhokta, the aggregate of enjoyers, and is omniscient and omnipresent. All the eternal jivas issue from a particle of him. At the time of dissolution, the jivas who are karmatmanaha, identified with their deeds, are reabsorbed in this great Purusha. This is my state as Matradasha, knower, which I have already described in Chapter 6. Mahalakshmi is the name the learned accord to the essence of Shakti. Niyati, fate, is Mahavidya, and Kali is Kala, time. The three gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas have already been mentioned. Sattva is regarded as sukhe, happiness, as being transparent, conducive to knowledge, and laghu, light, subtle. Rajas is regarded as misery, full of movement, red, and active. Tamas is known to be deluding, 
heavy, gross, black, and repressive. O Vasava, I have already revealed Maya, Prasuti, and Prakriti, the three fundamental sources of the material world. Bhutani, elements, are ten in number, and Kani, the senses, are thirteen. These twenty-three tattvas were clearly explained in Chapter 5. The aforesaid knower, who is my limited state, is pure consciousness. Illuminated by his inner consciousness, the knower exists like a mirror. Now listen with concentration to the knower's four states of existence. The first is when the cognizer exists as shunyamaya, void, as when a person is unconscious, etc. Next, when in the state of sushupti, deep sleep, the knower is said to exist in the form of prana, vital air, because during the state of Purusha's deep sleep, only prana is manifested. Since in the states such as loss of consciousness, poisoning, etc., even prana reverts to its source, Purusha remains integrated with nothing but his own essence, so that in such cases he is regarded as being in a state of void. In the third state of svapna, dream, the knower is regarded as consisting of only ashtapuri, eight cities. These eight are known to be pranaha, life force, karman, the senses, the three gunas, pragvasana, impressions left by previous activities, avidya, nescience, and linga sharira, the transmigrating subtle body. These are called the Eightfold City. In the dream state, the knower acts with volition aided by antakarana, the inner organ of mind, intelligence, and ego. When the embodied being enters the waking state, its functions are performed through physical effort. These, void, deep sleep, dream, and waking, are the four states of Purusha. Now hear about the jiva's threefold state, the three types of modifications that limit purusha, finite knowledge, limited function, and finite essential form, are his threefold state. Now hear a description of it. The jiva's knowledge becomes finite through the influence of maya, his power of action undergoes limitation owing to the absence of the divine attribute Aishwarya. Not being Shakti, he is Anu, atomic in size, as limited in his Kinchitkara, capacity to act, and Kinchignya, possessing finite knowledge, as opposed to God's being omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. I have already explained the jiva's dual and single states. Thus, I have fully described my state as matridasha, the knower. Now, Chakra, hear about antakaraniki, my state that relates to intelligence. I am absolute knowledge and have voluntarily become limited consciousness as the individual self. From that first sentient state, I have continued to descend step by step into more limited states of consciousness, human beings, animals, and plants. Subtle mind, which limits the chaitya, sentient being, is called antakarana, the inner sense, and has three components, manas, mind, buddhi, intelligence, and ahankar, egohood. Vikalpa, polarization into subject and object, adhyavasaya, decision-making, and abhimana, ego sensation, are their respective functions. 
Mind receives the vikalpayati, polarized knowledge. Ahankara makes it personal, creating the impression that it concerns one's own person, abhimanyate, and buddhi, always infused by the sentient being, makes a decision about the objects of cognition. Buddhi is said to be related to the Atman, self, whereas its function of decision is adibhautika, phenomenal. Sheltered in the mirror of Buddhi, Kshetra Gnya, the Jiva, is the Adidaivata, divinity, in Buddhi. Ahankriti, egohood, is spiritual, whereas the ego sensation is phenomenal. Rudra is the divinity of ego sensation. Mind is spiritual, polarized knowledge is phenomenal, and Chandra, moon, is its divinity. Each of the three components of the Antakarana, inner sense, has two aspects, one representing sensation and the other volition. Thus, buddhi has decision as its sensation aspect and prana as its volition aspect. Ahankara has ego sensation and zeal. Manas has polarized knowledge and sankalpa, conviction. In the sphere of action, the qualities of intelligence, egohood, and mind are prana, sangrambha, zeal, the act of grasping or taking hold of, and sankalpa, respectively. Prana is said to be prayatna, activity, and sangrambha is called garva, self-esteem. Self-esteem is awareness of owning the fruits of one's deeds, and that is called sangrambha. Scholars call sankalpa the loss of indifference, the awakening of interest, which is a quality of the mind. Thus, I have finished describing my second state, the Antakaraniki. Passing on from my Antakaraniki state, I gradually become grosser and am called the external senses. I have previously explained all these external senses in Chapter 5. It is indeed the mind that functions through the activities of the cognitive senses. When the eyes see an object, it is the mind that actually cognizes the object in polarized knowledge. Then, Ahankara relates the object of the polarized visual knowledge to the materially conceived self, whereafter Buddhi, having recognized and classified it, presents it to the Kshetragnya, conscious self. The reverse course is considered to take place in the functioning of the conative, active senses, because acts such as speech, etc., take place only after the functioning of sankalpa, decision, etc. All the particulars about these, such as the classification of adhyatma, related to a subject, etc., have been discussed before. This completes the description of my third state as inherent in the external senses. Now, hear me describe my fourth state as the objects of cognition. Objects are of two kinds, external and internal. Examples of external objects are blue, yellow, etc., whereas pleasure, pain, etc., are internal objects. In these four states I become gross. Owing to the polarization into subject and object in the perceiver's mind, although I am perceived, I am not recognized. When guided by virtuous preceptors in the course of keen speculation, the intelligent clearly recognized me as manifest in all objects and thus the whole range of created objects is dissolved. Then I manifest myself as absolute, complete consciousness, pure and purer than anything else, 
and I am known as the instrument. And becoming still more transparent, I manifest myself in the knower as consisting of pure consciousness. After having realized me in both my descending and ascending states, the devotee whose mind is fixed upon me and whose life is dedicated to me attains my status.